experience is a free worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode 179 of Category 5 Technology TV for February the 22nd, 2011. 179 of the darn things. There you have it. Hello there. We're very quickly approaching 200. Wow. That's exciting. Nice to have you here. You can join us in the chat room, category5.tv. We'd love to have you there. And uh, certainly tonight, you're going to want to be in our chat room because we have a couple of little gizmos to give away. I love my pogo plug. Actually, I was going to wear my pogo plug t-shirt tonight. Yeah. But uh, we could. love our pogo plug and we've got two of these to give away. John is actually wearing his pogo plug t-shirt. Thank All you right. for that. Um, so uh, stick around. You've got to be in the chat room tonight in order to qualify for that. Um, so uh, make sure you are in the chat room at category5.tv or if you uh, are using an IRC client. Uh, for example, I use Pigeon, uh, or if you're using XChat or any of the uh, uh, IRC clients, you can connect to irc.freenode.net, and our chat room is uh, pound category five. There cool. You go. Uh, tonight we're going to be this learning to. I do. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> tonight we're going to be uh, learning how to create a bare metal backup of our entire computer system uh, using free software, so stick around for that. We're also taking more qualifiers in addition to the Pogo Plug giveaways that we have. Uh, we're going to be taking more qualifiers for Wirecast 4, which we're going to be giving away uh, very, very soon. So uh, stick around. We're going to tell you how you can qualify for that software. And uh, yeah, let's take a look at our website. If uh, we can bring that up, category5.tv. We have a poll on our website right now. I don't know if you want to bring that up, and we'll get some viewer testimonials in oh. tonight as well. Uh, just right off the bat. But our poll this week is, what is your favorite segment on Category 5 TV? And we'd love to hear from you, so make sure you get in there. Uh, log in to the website. If you're not already registered, you'll need to register. Log into the website, and then you can cast your vote uh, to tell us whether you love the newsroom, or you love uh, viewer question and answer time, or uh, what it is that you uh, absolutely adore about Category 5. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So far, fun bits and banter. Fun. Is the number one. Uh, yeah. So I thought, you know, maybe we'll just take tonight and we'll just, you and I will just kind of sit here and. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Eric. Episode Eric. 200, you're going to spring for champagne, right? <laughs> no? That, that, there you go. That'd be a different Ginger episode, in? wouldn't it? <laughs> it's like last week's The Office, where they had uh, bottomless champagne and they decided to go out for lunch and it was bottomless champagne. Nice. Not a good idea when you have to get back to work. Definitely not, but made for a good <laughs> comedic half hour. All right, well, we could do that. Could happen. Yeah. All right. Well, let's see. How about a question? Well, let's uh, let's hit the viewer testimonials right off the bat. Right off the bat, you're gonna yeah. do that. Okay. Viewer testimonials, you can get onto our website category5.tv if you'd like to tell us what you think about the show. Uh, click on interact, and then you'll see down at the bottom viewer testimonials. And this week we've got a couple in. Uh, one here comes from Bjorn Eklund from uh, Halmstad, Sweden, who says, I used to watch the show often, but I can't see it live uh, because it goes on in the middle of the night here in Sweden. I uh, love all of your tips and advice and the fun of the show. Just one question, though. Why does the newsroom look like a webcam while the main show itself is perfect? I feel sorry for Hillary when the looks and sounds are so funny. Otherwise, great show. I watch all shows on the weekend after, uh, after sending. Uh, so that one uh, kind of warrants a, a response because Hillary's actually away at school. And tonight sure. she's uh, actually uh, away on vacation. So when Hillary's away at school, she's been good enough to, uh, to use Skype video just to be able to participate in the show and still provide you the fantabulous content that she provides you with the uh, weekly news. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the drawback when you are at school with you know shared internet in the dorms yes. and everything like that. And We've had a couple of nights where the bandwidth just wasn't working it for just us. Wasn't It just wasn't working wasn't out, open. and you know, the news is kind of jagged like mm -hmm. that. And, and it's largely because you got, you know, how, how do you tell kids on the network, okay, I'm going to do the news now, 
So, you know, <laughs> close all your peer-to-peer -peer programs and stop streaming video off of YouTube and just give me the bandwidth. It just isn't going to happen in a, Not in a shared internet situation. So, so Hillary has been good enough to, uh, to still participate in the show and we love having her here regardless of uh, the, uh, the lower quality uh, that comes from using low bandwidth uh, and a Skype video mm. connection. But she will be returning to us in the spring uh, right here in the studio in uh, beautiful HD glory. So that will be nice. You got one there for me? Okay, here's one from John Crisp. From hey, John. Texas. I don't think they have snow there this week, do they? They did a few weeks back. <laughs> anyway, okay. Hi, Robbie and crew. Glad to report something is working. Yes. Instead of asking you for help for my current trauma, I, I never could get Synergy working, so I downloaded VirtualBox, current version. It installed okay, the earlier <coughs> version didn't. It installed fine with my Ubuntu 10.10 .10 and just worked. Great. I even found out how to install guest editions. Now I have a screen size that's acceptable. It runs so, so, so fast. Sorry, it took me a second. <laughs> Somebody in the chat room was asking if I'd learned how to pronounce things this week, and no, I haven't, but I'm here. Everything I want. So fast, I think, is what we were trying to say. I've installed it, and it just works. Go figure. System, Win 7, 64-bit, 8 gigs RAM. I'm a happy Ubuntu camper now. Thanks, Robbie, for the tips on VirtualBox. That is fantastic. John in Dallas. John, great news. Thanks, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, cool to uh, be experiencing VirtualBox for the first time, too. Uh, tonight, uh, as I mentioned, Hillary is away uh, on vacation. So uh, Becca is joining us from the newsroom. I'll let that's, her. Uh, that's known in university circles as Reading Week, right? <laughs> no, literally. Like she's, but she's, it's Reading Week. Oh, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah. Well, then. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a few years. She might be reading. It's possible. On the beach? Yeah. Getting a tan? Hope you're having fun, Hill? She's, she's not really watching tonight because she's on the beach. Are you sure? There you go. Uh, so, Becca, I'll, I'll get Becca to uh, tell us what's coming up in the news. Coming up in the newsroom, over 10,000 euros were raised in only one day of fundraising to support LibreOffice. Fedora and OpenSUSE are giving up on Unity. Solar flare activity is concerning government advisors about our reliance on susceptible technologies. Thought-controlled wheelchairs and bionic limbs mean new freedom for the paralyzed, disabled, and amputees. Stick around for the latest news in about half an hour from the Category5.tv newsroom. Thanks, Becca. Another viewer testimonial here uh, comes to us from Dennis Finnegan in uh, Illinois, who says, Robbie is the best! I was going to read that, and I was going to do okay. it with more enthusiasm. Okay, no, no, you go ahead. Robbie is the best! Oh, did I show? I'm sorry. That's where the sorry. compressors come in handy. Yeah. See that? Last night... He solved in 30 seconds a problem I had been having for months once he explained in understandable terms what <laughs> auto was all about. I realized what the fix was and was promptly able to sign into the chat room. Fantastic. I feel bad at times. I use Win7, but I do have Ubuntu on a netbook, so all is not lost. <laughs> Episode 177 was great. Keep up the good work, Robbie, Eric, and the gorgeous Hillary. Sincerely, Thanks, Dennis thanks. Finnegan, a.k.a. Mathman, 47. Great. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, you joining us in the chat room there. Yeah. And uh, fantastic. Glad to have been able to help. Uh, Louis, the Spanish version, <laughs> 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 says, uh, thank you for getting me the answer for my remote control of Ubuntu 10.10 .10 HTPC. It helped my wife and six-year-old kid. I love the new site. Where is the perfect Ubuntu script, and will you ever get put on the Roku box? Yes to the Roku box. I've been in touch with them, and uh, they've sent me the service development kit and uh, talking to them about uh, possibly getting uh, access to a development version of the Roku so that we can get uh, get working on that. Otherwise, we'll have to wait until we can buy one, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But that's definitely something we're working towards. And glad to know that we were able to help you. And Perfect Ubuntu Script is, uh, if you go to our website, Category 5, dot TV, that's the quickest way to get there. Uh, go right to the home page. I'm kind of on the viewer testimonials page here, but... Uh, right back at the home page, down at the bottom, which is also, incidentally, where you're going to find the viewer poll over here on the right. But over here on the left, you see awesome links. You've got the newsroom, you've got the wiki, you got Perfect Ubuntu. All you have to do is click on that, and you'll be able to uh, get access to the Perfect Ubuntu script. You'll be good to go. Okay. Cool. Wiki? Wiki. 
Wiki, wiki. Wiki. Yeah, wiki. we've had that discussion. Okay, we have, but we never solved it. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking Louis, the Spanish version, should probably be Luis. Luis. Something closer to that. Anyway, we'll... we'll, we'll. Right. Right. Here's one from uh, Invincible Mutant. Hey, Invincible Mutant. Now that, that's a name. I there you go. Hi, Robbie. Congratulations hey. for the well-done website. Cheers. I can see improvement in terms of contents for your TV program. Your program is useful for an Ubuntu geek like me to follow up with the news and updates. And most importantly, seeing you guys online is interesting as you always present yourself with a wide smile. Thank you very much. Keep it up. <laughs> Cheers. Nice to have you here. Uh, and if you would like to submit a viewer testimonial, all you have to do is hop over to our website, category5.tv. Click on Interact, and Viewer Testimonials is down at the bottom of the menu. Yes, Fantastic. and that came to us from Manchester. Cheers. Yes, nice indeed. to have you here. Uh, so let's uh, let's hop over to Viewer Questions and get a couple of those in today. I know uh, we've got a, a reasonably busy night, as we always do, because we try to get enough, uh, you know, get some good information to you, but uh, certainly Viewer Questions. You can email live at category5.tv to get your questions in. Okay, well, this one's from Lance. Hey, Lance. Hey, Lance. Um, running Ubuntu 64-bit 10.10. Um, when using cheese cam to record a video um, and saves as Ogvid, what apps would your recommendations for transcoding it to different video formats? I'm familiar with Transmegan and Handbrake. Thanks. Great show. Cheers. Uh, I would probably use an M encoder just from the terminal to do that. You can just bring up your terminal and uh, let's see what we would do. <clears throat> what I'll do, I'll post this, uh, the command itself into the, uh, the show notes for episode number uh, 179. And uh, basically what you can do is once you've got that OGV file, here's a... Okay, that's M encoder, not yeah. men coder, right? Okay, just M encoder is the command, which you may need to install, but it'll prompt you if you don't have it. Uh, and you can go sudo apt get install. Just follow the directions. So out.ogv is my aug file, so that's like what the file has been saved as from cheese. And then the uh, out output video format, uh, the codec is going to be xvid. Uh, output audio codec is going to be mp3 lame. And then xvid Ops. This is the, your options. We're just going to do a, a single pass on the video. Uh, you can change that to two if you want to do dual pass. And then dash O means your output file. It's going to be, I just put test.avi, so that can be whatever you want to call it. Now, why would you do That'll two instead of one, Robbie? Two passes? Yeah. For quality. Okay. If, you're doing a, if you're doing a video where you want it to be uber quality, then two passes is going to give you more video okay. data. It's going to possibly produce a better output. But I think you'll probably find that with one pass with a cheese cam video, uh, it's going to be just fine because that's just you know that's your webcam. It doesn't need to. It's not like you're encoding like home movies kind of thing like right. that are HD or anything like that. So, so give that a go. There you have it, Lance. Yeah. What I'll do, Lance, though, is if uh, if you want to check the show notes for episode number 179, I'll post that uh, that command there to convert uh, OGV to AVI, uh, just so that it's a, you know it's playable in uh, on more systems, especially on Windows. Uh, but then, of course. Then people will start saying, "Oh, why don't you just install VLC?" And this, and that's cool too. And so but if it you, begins. Yeah. <laughs> so to answer the question, there you go. M encoder would be the way that I would go about it. Okay. Well, we have another one here from D W Mills. Hey, D W Mills. Okay, and uh, Mythbuntu 10.10 10 ah. and Debian Lenny. Okay, hello. I have several computers on my personal network running a mix of Debian Lenny and Mythbuntu 10.10. .10. What I would like to know is should I install and run a separate firewall like Firestarter even though I'm running Linux and my computers are connected to a router? If so, do you have a firewall suggestion? Thanks. I've learned a lot about Linux and open source by watching your show. Okay, and that came to us from DW Mills. Mm, well, if, if you're behind a firewall, then essentially you're, you, it depends on how you're set up. First of all, if you're behind a firewall to the internet, your, your computers are not seen beyond that firewall as long as the firewall has no uh, DMOZ, is what it's called, demilitarized zone. Uh, DMZ, demilitarized mm -hmm. zone, yes. sorry, DMOZ. 
That's a directory yeah, service. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All these acronyms spinning around in my head. Yeah. Um, so as long as uh, your firewall is set up as a net, net uh, NAT router, um, that's going to stop any connections. Um, you know, people trying to maliciously access your computers or whatever, because they. Your IP address is only going to resolve to the router itself. It's not actually going to resolve to each individual computer unless you manually open up ports. So that's kind of putting the stop at the internet level. But then the question that you have to ask is if you have wireless internet uh, in your home, that may be opening you up to um, security vulnerabilities where people may be able to access your, uh, your files and things on your home network even if you have, uh, say, web encryption installed on your router. Uh, which is easily hacked. Uh, so if you have Wi-Fi, you basically have that potential and that risk that somebody could be connected to your LAN as, a, as opposed to the, the WAN, uh, like the wide area network being the internet, the LAN being your internal network. If you have Wi-Fi, people can connect to your internal network. Um, if you have an open router, no password basically to connect to your Wi-Fi, anyone can connect to that. So then, you, if you're going to have that set up, you do need to have individual firewalls on each system. Um, and, uh, and then if they're... Now, what's the mix? We've got mostly Linux systems here, or...? If it was, uh, there was... Was it Mythbun? Mythbun 2, yeah. And uh, Debian Lenny. Okay, so it's mostly right. Linux stuff. Uh, with Windows, you can run into issues as well. Uh, and, and I'm sure it's, it could be a problem with Linux, but it's not so much a problem right now. Um, yet, I should say. But with Windows, you, you do run into the problem where installed applications may be, you may want to stop them from having access to the outside world. Say a virus, for example, may have, uh, you know, if, it's, if you don't have a firewall installed on, the, on that Windows box that is preventing outgoing access, then that could be problematic uh, as much so as the firewall that's protecting you from incoming access. So. Depends on the scenario. If you have Wi-Fi, I would definitely secure it up as best as you can. WPA2 encryption, or the best that your router is able to support, I would set that up. Um, if you're using WEP, uh, that's an old uh, security algorithm that ha has been cracked and is no longer safe at all. Um, so you need to upgrade your, your router or whatever at that point. Um, so, so that firewall protects you from people getting in from the outside world, but not so much the Wi-Fi. Right. Hope that answers your question or sheds some light on how how uh, you should approach that. So, okay. All right. Um, Cheers. Thanks for the question. Hey, Dennis Finnegan's back. There's a, another little. Uh, oh, hey, Dennis. And once again, not a question. Um, oh. Not a question, but I wanted to alert you to a site. That I see a might big link useful. there. All right. Yeah. Should I uh, spell it out? Well, what I'll do is it I'll might use be our. Useful for the Ubuntu users out there. And it's. Uh, I'll, I'll grab it. put it up on the screen, but it's OMG Ubuntu. Here, I'll so, do this. Okay. I've got I've got a URL shortener. A URL shortener. Yeah, oh, so, so we can throw it on the. We can take that big long URL and just condense it down into something that's actually easily readable. Because uh, nice. that's a long one. It it is. It a long is a long one. one. So let's see. It's OMG Ubuntu dot. Yeah. Co. uk slash twenty eleven slash zero one slash the <laughs> don't even go there. Uh, you know, I figure <laughs> like, well. blah, blah, blah. va dash omg I'll, I'll get dash it for guide you. dash two that's to dash must why dash do they like the band have <laughs> dash indicator <laughs> dash applets slash I think the title says it all according to Mathman forty seven are you are you done I'm done are you ready are you ready. I'm waiting. Yeah, all right. I gotta log into our shortener here. <laughs> Cat5.tv slash uh -oh. stop Eric. Jot fell asleep out there in the chat room. Cat5.tv five, Cat five slash stop Eric. I think the title says it all. We'll take you there. <laughs> <laughs> it says it. a lot, doesn't it? The Ubuntu guide to the best indicator applets around. Cool, so this looks like it's for the upcoming 11.04 with the new uh, indicators and everything. Cool, so I'll, I'll leave that with you. And uh, thanks for the recommendation there, Dennis. And uh, certainly we welcome people to, uh, to send in their recommendations if you come across a site that's cool. We will shorten the URL. That one's cat5.tv slash stop Eric. Hey. All one word, all lowercase. All right, but what? What? 
It's a little harsh. Thanks, Jot. You encouraged him. Okay. <laughs> hey, we have another dentist out there. There's more than one dentist out there. So this is Dennis Kelly. Robbie. I am watching episode 97. Come on, catch up. Oh, <laughs> I know it's been a while. What was the result of you looking for a redundant solution for Category 5.TV? Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find if you if you watch some of the further episodes there, Dennis. So episode some of those are redundant. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's not what quite you possible. Mean. It's quite possible, and if you're not careful, then uh, our European friends will know what it's like when Eric gets redundant. Wow! <laughs> I, 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 I head up the uh, repetitions, repetitious <laughs> department of redundancy department. He doesn't even get it, but what? you do. <laughs> I think Christy does. Oh, hi, Christy. By the way. Hi. Hi, Christy. Christy by Christy's the way. here. Maybe we'll. That's Christy, by the way. That's Mrs. By the way, to you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, if you watch some of the uh, some of the later episodes, there, Dennis, uh, we had uh, I did one uh, the installation of Unraid, and Unraid is uh, is a fantastic uh, system that we basically were able to take the concept of a Drobo, which is to say using miscellaneous drives that could be any size and any speed, putting them all into one device and uh, in this case just an old PC and uh, connected in I think eight hard drives of varying sizes and we were able to create uh, something like a 3.7 terabyte uh, redundant array with single drive uh, parity redundancy. So that's Unraid. I'll post links for you uh, in, the, in the show notes for episode number 179. Uh, and uh, certainly I'd encourage you to check it out and, and do check out some of the episodes where we actually went through the installation of uh, creating and building an Unraid server and uh, putting your drives in and then getting the software and installing that and actually booting it up and we did quite a few demonstrations. So, so if you're following through the episodes from 97, which is you know fairly old episodes, you're talking about uh, episodes that are going back almost uh, well, at this point, almost a hundred weeks. Yeah, so, so two years. So yeah, like eighty-two. Or no, he's got a few episodes to catch up. A few, a few to yeah. catch up. So, but uh, but the the device uh, is still running for us. Um, it should be noted that you know we did all that and and we actually are still using that that uh, that very same system and it's never failed us. It's been fantastic. I've actually had uh, two hard drives on separate occasions crash um, that needed replacing and we didn't lose any data. So. And it just happened transparently, and it happened without any issue whatsoever. And in fact, when they crashed, I just ended up buying a bigger hard drive and getting a little bit more space on my array. Uh, and then it rebuilt from parity, and then we got all our data, and there were no problems. So, so check it out. Yeah, it's called Unraid. Cheers. All right. We've got a couple more minutes until, time for uh, another question? until the news. Yeah. Hey, here's another really nice long URL. Oh, good. Maybe I won't read the URL. Okay, this is from John. He's learning. John Crisp. <laughs> hey, was, hey, John. I was having fun. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Robbie. Trying to get comp is running in VirtualBox and having no luck. Oh. The above URL, the one that I chose not to read, is as close to mine as I've found. Do you believe it? Oh, maybe we should actually uh, check out that URL. It's like a forum you got the email thread. up there? Okay. Yeah, I'm just bringing it up now. Okay. So, where was I? Do you believe it? Anyway, um, any way you've found to get comp is working. System NVIDIA, standalone. Okay. GE Force 310. Uh, I shouldn't need to update this new card. Uh, new Dell in. October of 2010, VirtualBox works great. I shouldn't complain, but I like Comp is to work too. I found so many conflicting scenarios. I don't know whom to trust. Thanks. Hmm. Oh, this is John in Dallas. Hi, Dallas. Okay, so I, okay. I gather from what you're saying there that, uh, okay, you, you've installed Ubuntu as a guest and you're having trouble getting the, the Comp is 3D stuff going. Right, he's got a Win 764-bit sure. system. So you're you're doing things a little bit differently than I than I do, John, and that's that's a matter of choice. And you've got Windows as your host operating system. Anytime I've set up uh, a VirtualBox system, I'm using Linux as my host, 
and then using Windows as the guest because Linux is my main operating system, so I do things a little bit backwards to the way that you're doing it. Um, so the things that I would look at, first of all, knowing that comp is, uh, these, are the, these are the special effects, all the, those cool effects that you get with your system. So uh, on, let's see, oh. there we go. So there's a comp is effect, for example. Being able to do stuff like that and being able to, to do some of the cool effects that we get with comp is, those all require 3D acceleration. And if your computer doesn't have 3D acceleration and you've got Ubuntu or Linux installed as a, as a host operating system, you're not going to be able to do the 3D acceleration. So similarly, if your virtual computer, your virtual machine in, in VirtualBox doesn't have 3D acceleration, then you're going to run into that same problem. Um, so first things first, we need to make sure that that 310 card that you have has the latest NVIDIA drivers and that it's, uh, that it's good to go with 3D and things like that. Uh, and beyond that, then we need to look at our virtual machine and just ensure, one, that you do have the latest VirtualBox guest editions uh, installed on that machine. But also, if we hop over to uh, you know, any one of the uh, systems that I've got here, go into settings, and go into display, you'll see extended features enable 3D acceleration. So you'd need to check that off. And I'm not sure if you need the 2D video acceleration or not, but I, I would tend to check that off. And you'll notice that this machine that I installed Ubuntu on defaulted to a 12 megabyte video card, which is absolutely insufficient for a system that you want to run comp is on. You're going to need 128 megs. So your card has to have at least enough video RAM to be able to support that. Um, so those are a couple of settings that you definitely need to check in order to make that work. So then boot up the system, see how it works, and see if, uh, if it's able to get 3D at that point. Um, 128 is the max uh, VRAM for that? I think that's, that's the max it's giving me there. Yeah. Um, now, this is on my laptop. I don't know if it's, if it's reliant on how much video RAM you have or not. I mean, that's quite possible. Like that should be sufficient. Yeah, 128 will do for you, but the default of 12 is not even close to going to do it for you. Uh, you really need to step that up. So, but turn on the 3D acceleration, see how it goes, and uh, hopefully that will uh, hopefully that'll do it for you, John. Google tells us 2D will not work with Linux guests. No. <coughs> so, but that it's already. a toggle switch. So, definitely we need the 3D, right? So, but again, if your host has any trouble with the 3D, then your guest is going to therefore have trouble with the 3D. So make sure your uh, Windows 7 system has the latest drivers and everything is configured to be accelerated and then you can accelerate your virtual machine and you'll be able to uh, hopefully get that going with the latest guest additions as well. Alright, so good luck John. Keep us posted. I'd love to hear from you and just kind of know uh, where that ended up and uh, like I say, that's, that's kind of the opposite of anything that I've done because I have my host as Linux and my guest as Windows so I'd be interested to hear. All right. We'll, uh, we'll head over to the newsroom and uh, hear from Becca. Stick around. Uh, after the news, we have, we're going to be learning about bare metal backups uh, using free software. And we've also got those two pogo plugs to give away. We're going to be taking qualifiers for Wirecast 4 as well. Uh, so stick around. From the Category 5.TV newsroom. The Document Foundation announced recently their intention of becoming a legal nonprofit to allow it to accept donations and financial assistance, as well as pay employees and rent without having to suffer the tax liabilities levied upon businesses. Since startup capital is required, they began asking for donations to reach their goal. Florian Effenberger, founding member of the Document Foundation, said we have started a public race for donations. The fundraiser, which appears to have begun last Wednesday, is set to run through March 31st and in its first day of fundraising, fundraising already had raised 10,000 euros. If community support for LibreOffice was ever in doubt, it's hard to deny now. If you'd like to contribute funds to the Foundation, see challenge.documentfoundation.org. Some bad news came across the wire last week. In a bit of a coincidence, the contributors from both OpenSUSE and Fedora, who were working on Unity, announced on the same day they were giving it up. Both have cited time constraints and frustration at uh, some buggy be behavior in implementing Unity, and while Fedora would accept help in implementing Unity if someone offered, the guy porting Unity to OpenSUSE just wants out and will be happy to hand off his sources to anyone who wants to take over. So it appears that if anyone wants to test Unity, at least in the next few months, 
Ubuntu, Ubuntu is going to have to be the one. Solar flares, which hit Earth last Thursday, are raising concerns about our increasing reliance on electronic equipment, such as GPS satellite navigation and the computers controlling smart grids for electricity distribution, due to their susceptibility to the radiation caused by approaching space weather. According to senior government advisors who have been keeping an eye on solar storms and their potential impact on the technologies we rely on, solar storms can now produce unprecedented damage on a global scale. Thursday's flare was the biggest in four years, and it ejected billions of tons of matter traveling at a million miles per hour towards Earth. When it hit our magnetic field, it generated magnetic storms and power surges which disrupted communications and grounded flights. The approximately 11-year solar cycle is now emerging from one of its quietest periods in 50 years, and is expected to reach a solar maximum in 2013, when the number of solar flares, flares on the sun which generate electromagnetic storms reaches a peak. A call has gone out for international collaboration and advisors are prompting governments to take space weather seriously. We'll see if the government responds with the requested early warning satellites. One device we all rely on which is, is susceptible to damage due to solar flare activity is our computer's hard drive. Keep an update back day, backup to protect your data and always have redundant copies on all your important files. Thought-controlled wheelchairs and nerve-controlled prosthetic arms are one of the latest in innovations in bionics being discussed at a science conference in Washington. Sci-fi meets reality with the wheelchair which can be directed by brain signals detected using a cap fitted to the user. It is the work of scientists in Switzerland and is part of our efforts to control machines directly via brain signals which could lead to new devices for the paralyzed and disabled. The main focus of bionics to date has been on providing prosthetics for amputees. Prosthetic arms can now be controlled by nerve signals in the remaining arm, which can be picked up by electors on the skin. I sustained traumatic injuries after being electrocuted at work, opted for the elective amputation of his left hand, which no longer had any function. He is now being fitted with a prosthetic arm, with, with which he can grasp and lift objects using nerve signals in his amputated arm. Later this year, a second patient will undergo elective amputation in favor of a bionic replacement. Get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from Gadget Wisdom Guru and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks, Becca. Now, we did have a little bit of stuttering there because uh, our stream hit very, very high CPU usage because we've got so much HD video going at once. Uh, the video clips that we were trying to play when things started uh, buffering there with Becca uh, are very very cool um, in that the the uh, the guy who is being fitted for this prosthetic arm just has a couple of wires going to basically what looks like a, an electronic bracelet uh -huh. and on the on the table he's able to control this hand just by thought and this is or I guess in in this case in the arm case it's by nerve endings so he's actually right. basically with the thought of moving his hand is actually moving the robotic hand but there's no actual movement it's all electrical impulses from but the, the but the uh, the uh, the robotic hand or the bionic right. hand is actually moving. But I, based yeah, on but the I mean, thought. it's not like a, a muscle thing; it's a nerve thing. It's the, that's the right. electrical impulses. Yes, from, that's wild. Yeah, it's not reliant on having you know uh, the ability with two fingers to control right. a robotic hand. Right. There there could be absolutely no hand, and just by uh, nerve impulses, it's Can able to control. Imagine how liberating that. liberating that could be for that's somebody who's been confined to. Uh, yeah, and I think that's why wow. um, Becca was saying that about people opting for this surgery who have no use of, say, their hand. Yeah. And, and where will that lead? Who knows? What I'll do, though, because the, uh, the video is very interesting from BBC, uh, I will post a link uh, to that if you're interested in seeing uh, more about uh, the bionic hand and, and how that works. Um, you'll get a, access to that video. I'll post a link in the show notes for episode number 179 uh, just to make up for the fact that we weren't able to play it tonight. Uh, tonight's episode is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug. You'll find them at www.pogoplug.com. 
And of course, we are also sponsored in part by Planet Calypso, cat5.tv slash Calypso for the free game download and join me in the massive multiplayer on online universe. Be a lot of fun. Cool. Very cool. You've been having a good week? I, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good. And hey, I got my, last week I took a taxi over to the studio. Yeah, your car was uh, having some Something trouble. had happened to my radiator. It looked like a, now, you wouldn't know this down in Texas, but you know, a big hunk of ice falls off a car, and apparently I must have run over one off somebody's car. And it, oh, and it are you radiator. serious? That's what happened? Yeah. Yikes. So the, the dealership wanted about $850 to replace it, and I took it over to a, uh, a mechanic that I've been to quite a few yeah, times, yeah. and he sure. actually he recrimped some of the fittings, and he says, I guarantee it'll probably need to be replaced you know, sometime, <laughs> but... Here you go, and it was less than an hour's labor, and oh, nice. I love the guy now. Nice. He's, oh, he's my yeah. hero. <laughs> we got to get this guy's number and like post yeah. it all over the website I, I and stuff like that. that. Yeah. yeah. No, so, so yeah, this has been a good week. Good news. So your car's so, running all right. It's it's great. Getting yeah. around. Yeah. It's good. Good. Yeah. Hopefully soon there won't be much ice flying up off the no, roads exactly. here in Canada. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Tonight we're looking at a, a chance to be able to back up our entire system. Here I am booting up into Windows XP. You don't seem Robbie's to do that often. booting up into Windows XP. I like this. Yeah. I like this. Where is this going? Where is this going? Downhill. That looks like a pretty stock uh, <laughs> wallpaper you got on there. That is very stock. Because this system, <laughs> all right, this system is, it's really the only Windows system beyond the broadcast system that we have on our network. And the reason for it is because we have our bookkeeping software. And it is QuickBooks. And, it's, and the particular version that we have didn't run in wine. It probably would now because we have the system and that's what you know we've yeah. been using for bookkeeping that's it's good and it works so but what we want to be able to do is have a backup of that system and in this case we're using this Windows system as a, uh, a demonstration but that said this can be any system so imagine your computer could be you know Windows Linux it could have dual booting it can have all that stuff and what we're looking at tonight is a program called clonezilla which you've heard us talk about in the past but that said, having talked about it, we've never actually, I don't believe, demonstrated the Isn't software. Isn't that a Clonezilla disc in the intro to the show that I'm holding up? It was yeah, a Clonezilla it was, disc. Yeah. 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 I should have had that backed up before I dropped it on the <laughs> Well, but you can get it for free. So tonight what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we can get Clonezilla. All right. So all you have to do is go over to Clonezilla.org. I'm going to go there. And we want to have a, a general idea about what this is. Basically, Clonezilla is... Do you remember the old Norton Ghost? I do. Yeah? It was yes. like a piece of software that let you clone your hard drive. So if you ever had your hard drive crash and you have an exact copy of that hard drive on another drive, or perhaps burnt to DVDs if it's small enough. I was at a trade show, and the, the, the folks from Norton or Semantic or whoever it was yeah. at that point uh, gave me a... It was like a teddy bear, but it was a ghost, and it was Norton Ghost. It was it's very frightening. Yeah, it was. It was kind of kind of freaky. But that software was it was good back in the day when that was all there was, and uh, Clonezilla comes along, and they're they're free. It's open source. It has the ability to to create backups of your system that are a, an entire backup from basically any file system. So ext three, four, five. There is no five. You know what I mean, Reezer. But if there were. <laughs> if there were a five. It, it backs up your entire system to an image. And you've probably dealt with an ISO image before for a CD. Where, you know, you get Ubuntu, and it's an ISO. It is an image of the original CD. So all you have to do is download it, burn it to a CD, and you have an exact copy of that yes. CD. So here's something a little different. We're creating an image of a hard drive. So this can have all of your programs installed, it can have files, it can have your networking settings, all of your, you know, the way that your system's configured, and it's a backup of the entire thing in an image that you can then transfer onto um, a, a new hard drive if something should happen. That said, it also supports multicasting, which for educational facilities or businesses that uh, want to be able to very quickly deploy new systems, for example, you can create a you can build a computer and set that computer up, get it working the way that you want, and then create a clone of it using Clonezilla. And then, using multicasting with the Clonezilla server edition, you're able to actually 
then put that image on 40 or more computers all at the same time. So you could deploy this, this computer operating system along with all your applications to 40 computers, say, uh, in under 10 minutes. And you think in, you know, in an educational yeah. facility what that means That's to the true. IT guy who used to have to go around with the Windows XP installer and do every yeah. single computer. And when somebody downloads a virus or something onto your system, you just you could blast it. The, you just keep that image. The image. Yep, yeah. for sure. And in businesses, quite often what happens in businesses and schools and government offices and things, you buy more than one computer at a time. You're not buying one computer like like normally we do at home. So in a business, you're probably going to end up buying all identical computers. So as long as one of them works, you create a clone of that one computer, and then you've got an image that you can use for any of those computers because they're identical, basically. Um, so really, really cool stuff. But in a home environment, it can also be used to back up all of your stuff so that if you ever have a system crash or anything like that, you've got an absolute copy of your computer's hard drive. So to get Clonezilla, we're going to go to clonezilla.org and go into Downloads. And you'll see that there are a few different versions. There's Debian-based, both stable and testing. And then there's Ubuntu-based, both stable and testing. And this one's called the alternative download version. The reason that you may want to go with the Ubuntu-based is because it contains non-free uh, and more up-to-date software. So the Debian-based one is based on, uh, being that it's based on Debian, everything that's included in that is free. With the Ubuntu-based one, even though Ubuntu itself is a distro, it contains all free software, uh, the, there may be drivers or things in this particular version of Clonezilla which are not um, free, as in, they, they're free, it's a free download, don't get me wrong, you don't have to pay for it. But they're not, they're not free in that they're not open source necessarily. So uh, some of the code that's used to create that version it, it may be more complete. There may be more drivers for different hardware that isn't available in the Debian-based version. So the one that I would want to download for the sake of usability is the alternative stable release. And when you click on that, it's going to take you to a website and let you download that ISO image. So we're going to go into the folder here. And there we go with the ISO. Again, there's a CD ISO, right? So once we've downloaded that ISO, it takes a couple of minutes. It's 139 megabytes. I've already downloaded it just for the sake of um, speeding up the show. <laughs> oh, 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 Love Windows, don't we? I'd say restart later. <laughs> it's going to reboot on me if I don't intercept. OK, good thing we caught that. What I want to do, now I this computer. to click restart now. This is pretty bare, <laughs> bare bones, OK? So what I'm going to do, just so that we can eventually come back to this system and see that something has happened, I'm going to create a file on our desktop here called test from episode 179. I'm going to open that file, and I'm going to say, hello there. That's all we need, OK? So when we restore this, what we're going to do is next week, we're actually going to crash this computer, and we're going to restore it from this cloned version of the hard drive. So that clone, if everything goes well, is actually going to contain that file, just like that. So it's a new file. It's never been on the system before. Now it's going to be a part of the clone. So I'm going to restart my computer. You're going to clone this before the uh, updates, sir. <laughs> Not messing around tonight. <laughs> always, it always, Windows always picks the most yeah. opportune times. Like, you're on the air. And oh. I'm going to get my updates now and just randomly restart your computer. But we'll be kind. And at the end of the whole thing, once we've closed all your programs and lost all your work, a little pop-up that says, oh, by the way, we rebooted your computer for you. Isn't that nice? Robbie, you gave yes. us permission to do that. Well, I just, I just never opted out of permission <laughs> to do that. Let's not get it wrong, I OK? Think the automatic updates you have to opt in. I got to opt out if you want it not to reboot your system for the security updates. I'm booting from the Clonezilla disk, which I've burnt to CD, OK? And you can do this, too. First option is uh, probably the one that you're going to want to use. This is uh, just use re regular VGA 800 by 600. In my case, though, I want to I want to make the screen a little bit bigger, just so 1024 by 768, that's fine. So I've just hit Enter on that, and it's going to start booting from the Clonezilla CD. And pretty simply, what we're going to do, now I've created a network share on one of 
uh, my servers. It's actually my Unraid server, but it's using Samba, which is the Windows uh, file sharing protocol. So I've created a, a share on my uh, Unraid server called Clonezilla. So what we're going to do is through the network connection, I'm actually going to clone the hard drive to a, f a file or a, an image on that network share. So I'm not actually even saving it to the, to the local computer. I'm saving it to, uh, the, to the network, directly to the network, which again, with the server edition, you could then deploy that from yeah. the network through PXE uh, or whatever you want to do. So there's, there's really no limit. We're not going to get Now, into if you were to use that image yeah. on that computer and then that computer, yeah. Uh, well, no, it would have to be another exact model of this same hardware sure. configuration. Um, and you're on a network. You're going to have to run something like new SID, uh, so the identification Well, you may have is, to change your networking information. Right. Yeah. But you're other gonna than have, that, you're going to be... Right. But it, we're not talking about... Well, I guess... like Because I know you have I, to be I did deploy like, uh, 20 or 30 sure. computers, and, and I didn't have Clonezilla. It was another product. But, right. Uh, um, we you know, spent a week or two making your system exactly the way you want it. And yeah, it exactly. was fabulous. So. so in this case, for the sake of this demonstration, we're getting into, we've created our system, it's the way we want it to be, and we're going to clone it as a backup. So now server administrators and IT techs and people who work in the IT department at the educational facilities or schools, they may, you may be interested in doing the multicasting. But that's not what yeah, we're getting into no. tonight. Tonight we're creating a, a backup on our network, on another computer on our network that we can use so that if our hard drive crashes, we can replace that hard drive and we can put everything back to the exact way that we wanted it, the way that it's set up right now. Or if you have teenagers and they <laughs> do whatever they do. They get a do. virus or whatever, yeah, yeah absolutely. You can just say, okay, we're going to pave it. And Which language? English is the one I'm going to go with. And then it's asking for my key map. If you use a, uh, a, a different type of key, keyboard, for example, with uh, high characters or other language, um, you can change that. But I'm going to go, don't touch my key map. Don't touch it. Stay away. It's a little harsh. Well, it, it's the wording <laughs> of Clonezilla, you know. Here we go. So that's going to load up Clonezilla. Here we go. What do you want to do? Start Clonezilla, which indeed starts Clonezilla. That's, there's redundancy for you. Okay, what do you want to do? A device image or a device-to-device -device image, okay? So what, what it's asking here, and I'm maybe not wording it correctly, take your device and put it in an image. That's what we want to do. We want to create an image of that device that is a file. We can then transfer that anywhere we want. We can back it up. We can put it on other devices. We can put it on our external hard drive. We can back it up to off-site backup, whatever we want to do. Device to device, on the other hand, is if you've already got that replacement hard drive, say you're upgrading to a larger hard drive, device to device will allow you to use Clonezilla to copy everything sector by sector to a new hard drive, and you'll be able to boot up that computer no problem. So that's a little bit different. Tonight what we're doing is a device to image type of clone. Okay, when you do it hard drive to hard drive, does the one have to, is there an actual, as I recall there was something you had to go in and actually say, okay, this is the one we're actually going to. Yeah, you'd have to specify it. which one you want to put yeah. it on. But again, we're not touching that tonight and that can be a little bit dangerous because what you're touching on there is what happens if you accidentally select the wrong drive. Right. You've got the blank drive and the one with all your data. Oh you got to be careful when we do that. But we're, we're not going to get into that one tonight because that's, that's an off case where you're probably not going to end up doing that. Uh, again, for the sake of a backup, here we are. I'm going to select. Now, see, you can select a local device. So if you want to put this on an external hard drive as an image, that's cool. If you want to use an SSH server to securely transfer it over to a, a Linux box, for example, or NFS, that's all possible, too. In my case, I've got a Samba server on the network, so that's the one I'm going to choose. And I'm going to configure this to actually save to my network. I'm going to connect by DHCP. This is basic networking. So essentially, on your network, if you have a DHCP server, which is to say a router, you're going to select DHCP. OK? Only reason, you know, anyone who needs to know that knows it already, what, what that means, I'm sure. OK, the IP address. Wording gets a little bit confusing here, so I'm going to help you out. Basically, the IP address that I'm entering here is the IP address of my server where the Samba share is. So you can go to that computer if it's a Windows box that has, say, um, that, that share on it. You can just check your IP address uh, by typing ipconfig space slash all, and that will give you the IP. 
In my case, I happen to know that my server is 10.0.0.5, so I'm entering that. The domain of your Samba server, in my case, it's not on a domain, it's a work group. Uh, again, if you're on a domain, you probably know what that means, so you can set that up. The account for your server, the folder, or the directory where it's going to put it. Now, keep in mind, again, the wording is a little bit weird because this isn't a directory at all. This is a Samba share. And as I said before, I created a share called Clonezilla. Now I have to enter the password for my administrator, and it's actually prompting me down there. And now we can see that 10.0.0.5 slash clonezilla is mounted successfully on home slash part imig. All right, press enter to continue, it says. So I can let that go. How do you want to proceed? We're going to go with beginner mode, keep things real simple. And then what do we want to do? Save local disk as an image or save local partitions as an image? We're going to save the entire disk. And again, what that gives us is it allows us to save all the data sector by sector for all partitions on the hard drive. So that includes uh, Windows, Linux, if it's dual boot, so, it includes everything. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I like that. So that's why we're doing the disk as opposed to just individual partitions. Okay, so this is going to be a full backup. It's actually doing some stuff down here. Now give it a name. So it automatically assigns today's date slash uh, dash image, and I'll put dash, uh, we'll call this my QuickBooks, because that's, that's what this computer is, and hit enter. It's asking me the local hard disk, the one that's going to be my source. It's the only hard drive in this computer, so it makes it real simple. I'm going to back up my 10.7 gigabyte hard disk. Okay. So now it's telling me at the bottom here, nothing that I need to know. Next time you can just run this command, hit enter to continue, and it's going to actually go through now. It's detecting devices, getting things ready. Are you sure you'd like to continue? It's just confirming that it's going to put this on part image, or imag, which we know is our share on the server. Are you sure you'd like to continue? And we're going to say yes. And there we go. It's beginning to create our backup. And there it goes. So this is going to take about 40 minutes to create this actual backup, which we're not actually going to do throughout the course of the show, obviously. Uh, but we wanted to start that. And this is going to complete tonight. And then I'm going to have a copy of this entire image, and we're going to create, uh, we're going to restore that uh, next week. So I'm going to just let that keep running. And we've got a lot of stuff to give away tonight. Uh, but oh. don't miss next week as we are going to be actually restoring that image with Clonezilla back to a uh, corrupted computer. We're going to crash that hard drive completely. And we're going to save everything and get back to uh, up and running. So Wirecast 4 is a brilliant broadcast software. It's what we use to create the show here at Category 5 TV. Everything that you see here is powered by Wirecast. And you can get the software at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And we're giving away a copy, and all you have to do to uh, qualify is visit our website, category5.tv, log into the website. If you're not already registered, make sure you register. And then go to support us and advertise on Category 5 TV. You'll find that nested somewhere on that page, hidden on that page, is information on how to qualify to win a copy of Wirecast 4. It is worth $450 US, and it's a brilliant piece of software. I'd encourage you to check that out. And for tonight, get in the chat room right now. You want a drum roll? Yeah. No, sorry, sorry, I'll stop. Category5.tv. Nice to have everybody joining us uh, in the chat room there. Good to see you. And make sure you get into the chat room. This is your last chance to qualify tonight. Um, we'll just give you a second to get in there uh, because we're taking qualifiers right there in the chat room, Category5.tv, using our handy drawbot. Ooh. Oh. It's going to actually grab all the names of everybody who's joining us in the chat room tonight and uh, tell us from those names who is going to win. Very cool. Give people a couple more moments. Here we go. This is to win. We've got two pogo plugs to give away. Now, these are going to uh, two individuals. So we're not giving you two pogo plugs. We're giving one to each. So, uh, so you've got uh, double the chances to win tonight. Here we go. Drawbot is entering the chat room. So you've been loving your pogo plug this week. Oh, it's great, you know, and um, the printer that my daughter uses yeah. 
wasn't working last night and said, oh, upload your homework to my Pogo oh, plug and I'll print it from here. Brilliant. <laughs> and it worked. It was great. Really? Yeah, it was great. That's fantastic. Um, no, I am uh, quite impressed. Yeah? It took me a, a little while to, to, to try it, but uh, <laughs> I might take this one home now. Yeah, but you've been enjoying it? I, I love it. Cool. I love it. Very good. Yes, indeed. Uh-oh. Yeah. Somebody in the chat room has a name that's that's messing up Drawbot. And that makes us <laughs> that makes us very commas sad. and slashes and yeah, things. Yeah, he's got in commas it. and slashes in their name. Oh, what a shame. I want to give these away tonight. Okay, so what I'm going to do, Christy? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what do you do in a case like that? We're actually we're just experiencing some technical difficulties with Drawbot, who goes into the chat room. But if I guess if somebody has a, a wonky name, it's it's causing something to go wrong. So unfortunately, Drawbot is unable to draw from the the current list of names. And because we're live on the air, it's it's unfortunate. I was going to say, you know what that is? <laughs> unfortunate. You want me to give you a number? So, and number <laughs> well, we okay. have pick a number between one and four. There you go. And then you count down. We're, we're not going to make you lose out on your opportunity to win a pogo plug. So we're going to put these, uh, these two pogo plugs on the shelf for next week. And uh, so make sure you're joining us next Tuesday night. Of course, you're going to want to be here anyways because uh, it's going to be an awesome show. We're going to be uh, going be back. Well, we're going to be taking that, uh, that back up from Clonezilla and, uh, and putting it. Uh, there you go. Winners are blank. <laughs> Thanks, Drawbot. <laughs> Winners, <laughs> blank, and... So next week we will give away two pogo plugs, which means we're going to have four pogo plugs to give away next month. So uh, make sure you are here at Category5.tv. It's been fun having you here. And uh, in the meantime, we do have that opportunity for you to win Wirecast 4. And uh, I'd encourage you to check that out. So we're going to do some uh, detective uh, work on the uh, program and find out yeah. what happened. We'll figure out what happened there. Okay, well, that'll be so fun. Next week, we have Tuesday, a episode number 180. That's a good way to have a 180. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, we'll reverse everything that just happened, Indeed. and we'll have a working draw button. It's we'll going to be an incredible we'll chance have a for you to back up with our fancy little notebook document. Yeah. And how fancy is that? Yeah. Eh? Did you try out your ringer wraps this week? I did, and my son has the same. Uh, got the same phone. Uh, yeah. Got the same phone, and uh, so I gave one to him. I I don't know if he's. Uh, Actually gone out and played in the rain cool. or anything yet, but uh, <laughs> played in the it, rain uh, seems pretty cool. Very good. Check those out. That is uh, oh, wh where are they? Uh, cleverwraps dot com. Yeah. Well, get your questions in live at category five dot tv, and uh, again, I'd encourage you to uh, submit a viewer testimonial, and uh, don't miss next week's show. It's going to be it's going to be jam packed, and we're going to have so much going on, especially now that we've had to move some things to next week. So that's going to be a lot of fun. You're not going to want to miss out. And uh, uh, Christy, you should get in here and just, uh, we don't have a microphone for you tonight, but just we'll come just and wave and say hi, with, and the, say hi. with the 15 seconds that we have. Christy uh, is, is here in the studio, surprised us tonight, and just uh, came and has been a, a part of our studio audience. Maybe you could back up a little bit, John. There you go. Hello. Hey, Christy. Hi. How are you, love? <laughs> good to see you. You been keeping well? How's the, the oh, yeah, work good. been? Yeah, really good. Working at the radio and... I, I, I've been cheating. Yeah? Yeah. Uh-oh. I've, I've been doing some news from home. News from home? Yeah. Like voice tracking or just sending them tracks or what? How are you um, doing that? Through a remote site. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Now we just got to get you on your, on your pogo plug. <laughs> Uploading them that way. I keep That'd trying. That'd be good. Okay, somebody says, hey, there's Christy, and then, hey, yeah. it's cold and... Um, Michigan, <laughs> and so it begins. Oh, that's awesome! It doesn't I take long. It. It's cold in the Netherlands. Eight it's cold in the Netherlands. <laughs> Minus yeah. two point five. Wow! Wow! He, he even Very has specific. The, the half a degree there. It was minus seventeen I here this morning. <laughs> Greg in Texas. Yay! <laughs> it's oh, uh, oh Agamotto. Yay, Agamotto. Oh uh, wait, wait, wait. From from sixty-two, 62 Fahrenheit to thirty-eight Fahrenheit. Wow! Wow! So. For you Celsius people, that'd be <laughs> like probably you know, about 18 down to. Uh, it was Celsius a great idea bringing her in with one minute left of the show because we are out of time. I love it. And I can actually cut her off, and it's and it's okay because we're out of time. Seven and Manchester. Wait, wait, it's wait, great wait. to see you though. Yeah, it's good to see you too. So good to see you. Wait, upper 60s in Texas. 
Have a fantastic <laughs> week, and we'll talk to and, you next uh, Tuesday night. So wait, d man And uh, the enjoy that weather. There? Wait. Wait. <laughs> Wait. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Okay. Wait. Wait. <laughs>